Welcome, I'm Marion Forrester, and I'm going to show you how to make a couple of paintbrushes using instructions from Il Libro dell'Arte, or the Craftsman's Handbook, written by Sanino Sanini in 1437 Italy. I'm going to demonstrate making a brush with squirrel fur and then with sable fur, both of which were used in the medieval period and are both used to make paintbrushes today as well. But before we get into that, Let's discuss a little bit of history. The Brussels manuscript, written by a painter named Pierre Lebrun in 1635 and contained in this book, which I highly recommend, refers to paintbrushes as pencils and says that the, that the brush heads should be made of a soft kind of fur, but which has su sufficient resistance to keep itself straight and to make a firm point for painting. Lebrun then lists animals that provide fur that meet these requirements. Bear, marten, and similar animals, hog, and what they call fishes, which is annotated to probably refer to seal, but could also be a water-loving species of weasel family, like otter, or perhaps marten, also called a fisher. A couple of manuscripts written in Middle English and contained in the craft of limbing and the manner of staining by Mark Clark also refers to a paintbrush as a pencil and says that it is made of squirrel tail. While described on a section on stained glass as opposed to illumination, on diverse arts mentions making paintbrushes with the hair of the tail of a marten, badger, squirrel, or cat, or from the mane of a donkey. A very proper treatise published in 1573 by Richard Tottle and available free online calls for a pencil made of gray amice or caliber tails to apply size for gilding. Amice is probably a gray squirrel or marten and caliber most likely refers to squirrel from the Calabria region of Italy. So let's now go over the parts of the paintbrush so that we can establish what we're talking about. So here we have a paintbrush that I've made and at the very end is the part you use for painting. That's what we're going to call the brush head. And this one, as you can tell, is kind of stiff and that's because I have dipped it in gum arabic which helps form the nice shape of the pencil head and also helps you get it through the next part, which is the ferrule. And this, in period, was made using a feather shaft. Nowadays, we would use metal. And our last part is our handle. And I have used a small dowel that I found at a craft store or a dollar store and shaped it into the shape of a spindle which is what is referred to in the manuscript. And the manuscript we're following today is the Craftsman's Handbook. This is a great resource for anyone who is starting out with researching scribal things in the medieval period. I highly suggest it. It is very cheap and it is well worth your buy. So let's go over some of the things you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need some sort of fur. And we're going to start out with squirrel fur, but then we will change techniques a little bit and use a weasel tail. And this one is sable. This is what your highest quality paintbrushes are made of. And this one is mink, which I think I'm going to use today. And if you look carefully, we have the longer guard hairs and the softer under fur. And we don't want that under fur. That's not gonna make a good paintbrush. So all we can use from these is the long guard hairs and we'll have to pick out the soft under fur. Next, what we're going to need are feathers and I've got several feathers here of different sizes. 
So you want to make sure that you pick the size feather that you want for the size of brush you're going to make. Most paint brushes I use are pretty small, so I'm going to be using a duck feather. This is a goose feather, or a turkey feather. Much larger. Make a good wash brush or something. Something you have to watch out for. So, one of the reasons I take the duck feathers is because they have a nice, long, clean area here. And once you get up into here, that's not empty. So we can't use that. And these feathers that I picked up has a much shorter area, and this one has none. So these would not be good for making paintbrushes. So we'll be using the duck feather today. Another thing you're going to need, of course, is the wooden handle for wooden stick for a handle. You can make one off of any kind of stick that you find in the backyard, but I like little dowels. You can either cut them in half to make them a reasonable size for you to use. And then I taper them on a belt sander. If you want, you can do that by hand using sandpaper. Next, we're going to need some sort of thread to tie up your bundles of fur. And I'm using wax silk, something that they had available and something that works really well. And next, I'm going to talk about the adhesives we're going to use. So this is fish glue. I got this at John Neal. Great place, good people. Um, not that expensive. It's something that was used for gilding in period, and so that's what I'm using today. Also, I'm going to be using a little gum arabic, as I said before. This was this is liquid gum arabic and it is great for bringing your furs together and kind of protecting them too if you're traveling. We are also going to be using something small like a toothpick or like a yarn needle and that's going to help in clearing out your feather shaft because we're going to want a clear tube for that. We're going to need scissors to clip our tube to make our ferrule. We're going to want a couple of little containers. One of these is, I'm going to put some gum arabic in, and the other one I'm going to use to help shape my handle. We'll also need a little card, and on mine I have written tip on one side and cut end on the other. The shape of the hair is tapered, so the farther you go out, the more tapered it is, and the smaller it is, that will help make your nice sharp paintbrush and make it nice and tapered as a whole brush. So you wanna make sure that you keep the tips together and the ends toward the skin together. Okay, let's get down to it. Our first step is always to choose our feather. And as I said, we're going to be using some duck feathers today. I have put these into a cup of water, which is very important. It helps soften the shaft of the feather so that when we cut it, it won't splinter. Secondly, we're going to use this to help stick our squirrel tail furs together. So I'm going to take out one that looks like a good diameter for what I want to use. I'm going to clip it off pretty close up to the feather part. Always make sure that you hold the part that you want to keep, not the feather, because if something goes flying you want it to be the feather and not the tube that you wanted. And you want it about maybe an inch and a half. This one's maybe a little long. We can trim it down just a little bit. Now, what we're going to do is there is a little bit of stuff in there. So we need to take that out. We're going to use a needle this time. 
a lot of times, especially if you've been soaking your feathers for a while, it comes right out. Easy peasy. So now we have our nice little tube for making our feather, or our paintbrush. So secondly, what we're going to do is get our brush head together. We're going to look for the nicest, straightest furs we can, which are probably not at the tip. So we're going to come down here, gather a nice amount together, grab our scissors, and cut as close as possible to the skin. And we're going to try and leave this in a nice little clump. And for squirrel, it's pretty easy to get it all in one. And I don't know that I'm that worried about getting all of the fur lengths to the end. So we're just going to tie this off. I'm going to grab one of my threads. This is the hardest part. While holding your little bundle, you need to tie a knot. And this takes some practice, so don't feel bad if you don't get it the first time. We're going to tie a few knots. But it's a lot easier to work with now that we have one of the knots already done. Just tie a few knots around there to keep it from unraveling as we shove it through our ferrule. Got some good knots there. So now I'm going to take my cup of water again and to get all of my furs together I'm going to dip it into my water. And it's like magic. Brings it all together into a nice brush head. And we're going to get the thread out of there. Look at that. Beautiful. We're going to try and move the knot up just a tad. That'll help us. The next part, since all of our furs are nice together, we're going to push it through our little tube to make our ferrule. And to help again, we can use either a toothpick or a needle. And that's looking pretty good. This one looks like it's going to be a nice long liner brush. And we have quite a bit sticking out the end here, so I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. And I'm going to cut all that mess off so that when we stick our handle in, it won't shove it too far. And we're going to shove it back where we wanted it. You can determine at this point how long you want your brush head to be. That looks beautiful. Look at that. Now we want to attach our brush to our ferrule and we're going to use our glue. Since you just need a little bit, just dip it in and then put it in. And it's pushing my head a little bit farther, that's fine. Look at that. And we have a paintbrush. Now sometimes you'll see some threads wrapped around the outside here. I could definitely do that. I have seen both wrapped and unwrapped in manuscripts. Sometimes on the very same manuscript you see thread wrapped and non-thread wrapped. If you have any glue sticking out, you can just take that away with your fingers. Now, if you want to condition your handle a little bit, you can take a bit of wax, rub it on there, and you can kind of warm it up with your, with your skin and with a little bit of friction and just condition your brush handle. And I can do that over this whole thing and it'll make it nice and waterproof and there you have a brush. Beautiful. Okay, next we're going to cover this quickly so that we don't get hair in it and set up for our next brush. So 
This time I think I'm going to use some mink. The mink is a little bit different than the sable. If you look, the guard hairs aren't quite as long on the darker mink. So it's a little bit more difficult to work with, but we can still do it. So we're gonna take a little handful here and there are extra steps for this because we have to get rid of all of that fluffy under her fur. And I tried to get as close to, as I could to the skin there. And so we have our guard hairs. I'm going to grab the guard hairs and pull out all that little fluff. And if you have a container to put your fluff into, that is a great idea. Then you won't have little fur bunnies running all over. And some people are more meticulous on taking out any little bent furs, but we're not going to be too meticulous today. If you really want to get out all the little under furs, you can use like a lice comb or something but we're just gonna go quick and dirty today. And we're, since you don't get a whole lot of guard furs in one, you're going to have to do several little clumps, which is why it is so important oops, to have your furs all properly aligned on here. And this is where it's important to remember what your tip is and what your skin side is. Because if we just have a lump of fur going every which way, it's not gonna be nice and tapered. So we'll do a few more little lumps here, little clumps. Gather all our guard hairs, grasp the guard hairs, pull out the fluff. You're also pulling out any guard hairs that are not quite long enough and don't really want to be in your brush. It's like magic, all that fuzz comes out. We'll do one more, I think. Let's see here. One more big clump. You don't want to grab too much, otherwise it'll be a mess trying to keep everything together while you cut it and pull out the guard hairs. And there we go, all that under fluff is gone. Any shorter guard hairs. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Now, since we're doing a pretty small brush, I'm going to look for the smallest diameter of feather that I have. Let's see what we got here. Let's do this one. You want to be a brush today. Again, cut it off holding this part. The feather part goes flying. I'm going to clip pretty close to the tip so that we have a nice small diameter there and push out all the yuck. And looks like we have a nice clean shaft. Oh, oops. Go one more time here. Make sure we get all the stuff out of there. There. I'm gonna clip a little bit more off. Doesn't wanna come clean. There we go. Now it's nice and clean. There, look at that. Nice tube. All the way through, you can see. Okay, so I'm going to get a nice long piece of string because this is going to be interesting. I'm gonna pick up our furs and we're gonna do a couple extra steps here. So we're going to put this into our little container and I'm also going to get my gum Arabic right away. Hmm. 
Okay. And we are going to tap this a little bit to get all of the little hairs together and roll it to try and get all of our fur the same length. Roll it a few more times. You can see it's kind of coming together in a nice little clump, which we can then carefully take out. And then we gather them together, take our thread, and the hardest part is tying our knot. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Don't feel bad if it takes a couple tries. That is the hardest part. Undoubtedly. We're going to do a couple more knots. Make sure we're secure. Takes a little bit of finger agility here. Try and get all of our furs in there. One more knot and we'll call it good. And if you think that you're going to have problems getting your brush head to kind of stick into your little um, ferrule, it's not a bad idea to tie a few extra knots. I'm going to tie one extra because why not? Make sure we stick in our ferrule nice and secure. Don't want it just falling out. That would be embarrassing. There we go. And my hairs have shifted a little bit, but we're still got a pretty good brush head. Now this one does not want to stick together nearly as well as the squirrel fur. And we're gonna take out maybe a few of these extra long ones. And to get them to stick together better, to go through your ferrule, we're going to dip it into a little bit of gum arabic, which will help us to form our brush head. And it should be nice and tapered. This will help it stick together. And now we're ready for our brush head, for our ferrule. Again, we take our needle or a toothpick and very carefully shove it through. Oh, look at that. That looks like a nice brush. So, all we have sticking out is our threads. Very carefully trim your threads. Grab a stick to use as your handle. Dip it in your glue and put it in very carefully. And since we soaked it for a while, we're not going to see any splintering there. Wipe off that little bit of glue. And there we go. We have another paintbrush. So that is the technique I use. It should be pretty close to what was used in period. We made both a squirrel tail and a mink tail. If you have any questions or want to learn more, I highly suggest checking out my blog, dragonflyscribeblog.wordpress.com. Again, dragonflyscribeblog.wordpress.com. And I hope you try this out for yourself sometime. Thank you.